Welcome to Faith Lessons. My name is Dr. Douglas Petrovich, Professor of Biblical History and Exegesis at the Bible Seminary, and this is the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis begins the Bible, and it's an extremely important book. It sets the stage for everything that's going to happen throughout the history that's recorded in the text. Let's talk about some of the background matters quickly before we jump into the text. First, we start with the authorship of the book. Who wrote it? Well, the Bible itself, I think, makes it clear that Moses is the author. He doesn't begin the book of Genesis by saying, I, Moses, am writing, but there are places throughout the Pentateuch, that's the first five books of the Bible, includes Exodus, in addition to Genesis, Exodus and Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy. Well, there are places in there where it says Moses wrote this law, the Torah in Hebrew, and he gave it to the priests. So, for example, that's in Deuteronomy 31, verse 9, and then several places in the book of Exodus, it says that he who is, that's the covenant name of God, said to Moses, write this in a book or a scroll as a memorial and recite it to Joshua. So clearly Moses is instructed to be writing things left and right. And these are the things that we find recorded uh, in the Pentateuch. And that, of course, includes the book of Genesis. So that's the authorship. What about the recipients? To whom did Moses write this book? Well, I think it's fairly clear that he wrote to the Israelite nation that was about to enter into Canaan. Uh, Moses died, of course, right before they entered Canaan, and um, his audience was the new or younger generation of Israelites that had not been part of the disobedience that took place right after the Exodus. Remember that God cursed um, those people and said that they would die in the wilderness or the desert over a 40-year period of waiting. So the recipients are this new generation that was about to enter into Canaan. What about the place of writing? Where was Moses when he wrote the book? There are two pretty much uh, viable options here. One is that he wrote somewhere in the desert, probably to the south of Canaan or to the east of Canaan. To the south of Canaan would be modern northern Sinai Peninsula. Uh, to the east would be Jordan, the country of Jordan. So in one of those two places uh, he would have written, I would say more likely in the desert to the south of Canaan. Um, so that's the place of writing. What about the date of writing? Um, we have a time frame. I think that's a very clear and specific time frame that would, would be pretty much the parameters for when it would have been written. On the 24th of April, 1446, that's when the Israelites fled out of uh, Egypt at the request of God and at the um, powerful 10 plagues that humbled Pharaoh and the Egyptians and essentially prompted the Pharaoh to release the Israelites so that they would just get out of Egypt and not bother them anymore. So from that date until the 28th of April, 1406, that's when the Israelites enter into Canaan from Jordan. They cross the Jordan River and enter on that date. So between those dates, the book's written. Maybe more practically, it would have been written sometime between 1440 and about 1420. What about the occasion for writing? What prompted Moses to write? The occasion probably is something like this. Um, not only actually for the book of Genesis, but for the entire Pentateuch, the occasion was that the Israelites were about to enter into the promised land as a permanent possession, which would be the location where they would live and the nation would grow and it would be their place of heritage. So. That really is what prompted Moses to write, to prepare them for the time period that they would spend in this land of promise. Theme. For every book of the Bible, there's a kind of an irreducible minimum, maybe one word, one phrase, or sometimes a little bit longer. The shorter, the better. It's easy with the book of Genesis. You can limit it probably to one major theme, which is beginnings. This is where things start. It's, it's recording the origin of the universe, the deep, dark, black cosmos. It's recording the origin of the earth, the first entity that's said to have been put into that deep, dark, black, empty universe. It's the origin of plants, the origin of animals, all kinds. Uh, animals that are on the land, animals that are in the seas. It's the or records the origin of human beings origin of marriage, the origin of sin, which of course includes the curse that came to mankind as a result of the introduction of this new thing called sin, something that God himself did not create. It records the, in Genesis 11, 
the beginning of languages, plural. Before that, there was only one universal language. And it also records, and this you can find throughout chapters 12 through 50, the origin of the chosen nation of Israel. So the theme, the main theme, is beginnings. Then we come to the purpose. For what reason did Moses write? And certainly for the first 11 chapters, it's fair to say, he wrote with this expressed purpose that this manual, if you will, these 11 chapters, would be a vaccination against the adverse effects that would be created by constant exposure to a poisonous worldview. That would mean Canaanites would continue to live within the land. And that being the case, God knew that they had a poisonous worldview that would inhibit the Israelites from worshiping him alone and from following him and from doing the things um, out of obedience that he instructed them to do. So it was a beautiful portrayal of God's um, love for his people, knowing that even though they would disobey him, he would provide them a way to live successfully in that land that was the land of promise. Because there are so many important elements or themes that are found within that the book of Genesis. And it really takes us back to God's faithfulness in providing for his people. Thanks for listening. Stay connected with us at thebibleseminary.org and subscribe to this podcast.